Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching videos of Thermodynamics. So in this lecture, we are studying one of the most important topic that is Carnot cycle. As you know, according to the second law of thermodynamics, we know what is the second law of thermodynamics. Second law says that there is no heat engine that can work with 100% efficiency or we can say heat cannot be converted completely into work. Okay. So, first of all, understand what is a heat engine. Any system, you take any engine like the engine of motorcycle or any other that can use the heat. Okay. This is the engine that is using the heat and it is converting it into the work. So, an engine is that thing that will use up heat and then produces the work. But there is no heat engine that can convert completely the heat into work. This is the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Before second law of thermodynamics, there was a scientist, Sadi Carnot. Okay. They made a hypothetical engine. Okay. This was actually only their assumption. They made an ideal reversible cycle, an ideal engine. But actually, if we see in the realistic, there is no engine of such type. Okay, this we can call an ideal engine that works with the 100% efficiency. Okay, actually the whole process will go in the four different reversible processes that are like a cycle. That is called the Carnot cycle. Okay, so actually this engine was reversible and that can work. We assume that it can work with the 100% efficiency. It means it will give the maximum work that can be produced. Okay, for this they assume that the system will go through the four different steps, four different reversible steps and that are like a cycle that we call Carnot cycle. Okay, one thing is clear. Now see, here suppose they took a cylinder, okay, and it, it, they filled an ideal gas. Okay, now there was a piston. This piston was frictionless, okay, and the surface of this is fully conducting, okay. So, now what happens? There are two thermal reservoirs. One we call source from which it is taking the heat, okay. So, this source is actually at the higher temperature. This we called theta 2. Okay, and then there is another reservoir that we call C, in which the heat is going at last. Okay, this is at the lower temperature that we call theta 1. Okay, or we can show it by T2 and T1. Okay, both the things are same. Now, this system is subjected to the four different reversible changes. See here. This is a PV curve, a pressure volume curve that we usually take for the work done. Okay, now we will show here four different steps. The system is happening in four reversible steps. Step one is from here to here. It means from point A to point B. In this process, the volume is changing from V1 to V2. Okay, now you can see here the pressure is decreasing. It means the volume is increasing. So, this process is expansion process. Okay, now in this process, the whole process is happening at the temperature T2. It means the first step from A to B is a reversible isothermal expansion. In this whole process, suppose the work done is given by W2. As this process is expansion, so this work done W will be negative. Its numerical value will be negative. Okay, and the magnitude of work done can be find out by this graph. The area under the curve AB will show the work done in whole this process. Okay. Now, the system is isothermal in whole this process. It means temperature is not changing, but the gas is expanding. It means the temperature will decrease. But we have to not decrease the temperature because the process is isothermal. So, some amount of heat will get absorbed. Okay, so Q2 is the heat absorbed by the system. Now comes to the second process. Now the system is going from stage B to stage C. 
okay in this process the volume is changing from v2 to v3 okay now this is an adiabatic process the second step from b to c is a reversible adiabatic expansion adiabatic means there is no exchange of heat okay exchange of heat is not happening so the temperature will decrease because the system is expanding okay so the value of temperature will decrease from t2 to t1 it means here the temperature was at point b the temperature was t2 but at point c the temperature will be t1 okay in this process the heat is not being absorbed so we can write that q in this process will be equal to 0 okay now the work done in this process we can assume is w suppose in this process the work done is w here the work done was w2 here this is w now see the third step third step is from point c to d in this manner this is going here this is going here okay and this is going in this manner c to d okay so the third step is from c to d and in this whole process the temperature will remain t1 it means it is again an isothermal process but now you can see here the pressure is increasing the volume is decreasing so it is a reversible isothermal compression the third step is reversible isothermal compression and in this whole process the temperature will remain t1 now suppose the amount of work being done here is w1 see here this is compression work okay the work is done on the system on the gas okay so this is a positive value this will be positive okay and in this process the q1 amount of heat will be released in the third step the volume is changing from v3 to v4 okay now we comes to the fourth step the step fourth is from d to point a see here in this step the volume is changing from v4 to v1 we are going from d to a this is actually adiabatic process reversible adiabatic compression because the volume is decreasing this is a reversible adiabatic compression so we will write d to a is reversible adiabatic compression okay now you can see here the temperature was here t1 at point d the temperature was t1 and at the point a the temperature is t2 it means temperature is changing from t1 to t2 but this is an adiabatic process so no heat is being absorbed or released it means q will be equal to 0 okay in this process the work done suppose is equal to w this okay now this whole cycle you can see from a to b b to c c to d and d to again a this process is called carnot cycle okay and the area under this cyclic stage in area under this this one will show the work done in whole this process okay this is called the carnot cycle now we have to see the magnitude of work involved so see here w total will be get by the summation of all these works it means w2 plus w plus w dash plus w1 okay now it is a cyclic process we know in cyclic process the change in internal energy is equal to zero it means minus w total will be equal to q total okay so we can say q total that is equal to q2 plus q1 and w total we know is equal to w2 plus w plus w1 plus w dash okay now we have to find out the efficiency of carnot cycle how we will get it okay this thing is clear now we see the efficiency of a carnot cycle suppose we are taking one mole of ideal gas okay one mole of ideal gas and suppose t2 is greater than t1 now see 
in step 1 what was step 1 from a to b isothermal reversible expansion in this process we know the whole process is happening at the temperature t2 and volume is going from v1 to v2 it means del t is equal to 0 okay and del u will be equal to 0 so q2 will be equal to minus w2 and that will be equal to r t2 natural log of v2 upon v1 okay now see in step 2 step 2 was reversible adiabatic expansion in this process the system is going from v2 to v3 but q was equal to 0 and we know in adiabatic process w will be equal to t1 to t2 integration of cvm dt Okay, and this will be equal to CVM T1 minus T2. Okay, now come to step 3. Step 3 was isothermal reversible compression. And this is happening at the temperature T1. Okay, and system is going from step V3, volume V3 to volume V4. Okay, so in this step Q will be equal to q1 will be equal to minus w1 equal to r t1 natural log of v4 upon v3 now in step 4 what is step 4 reversible adiabatic compression and in this step the system is returning from temperature t1 to temperature t2 so w dash will be equal to integration between limits t2 to t1 CVM dt is equal to CVM t2 minus t1. If you want to see how we can find out work done in adiabatic process or in isothermal process, then you can see our lectures. You can go to playlist of thermodynamics and you will find different lectures for work done. Okay. So now W2 will be we can find out it by the addition of all these works. It means W2 plus W plus W1 plus W dash. Okay. Now see here W and W dash are opposite to each other. So they will cancel out. Okay. You can see here this CVM T2 minus T1 and here was CVM T1 minus T2. Okay. So they will cancel out each other. Here CVM T1 minus T2. So this both will cancel out each other. So, we are getting W total is equal to W2 plus W1. Okay. And this we can write. This will be equal to minus R T2 natural log of V2 upon V1 minus R T1 natural log of V4 upon V3. See here this v2 upon v1 and v4 upon v3 these are not independent from each other for step 2 if you have seen the step 2 you can pause the video and you can see in step 2 we have seen t1 upon integration between limits t1 to t2 cvm dt upon t this will be equal to minus r natural log of v3 upon v2 okay similarly in step 4 this was in step 2 and in step 4 we have seen limits t2 to t1 cvm dt upon t this is equal to minus r natural log of v1 upon v4 okay so we can write r natural log of v3 upon v2 is equal to minus r natural log of v1 upon v4 or we can write v3 upon v2 is equal to v4 upon v1 it means we can say v2 upon v1 is equal to v3 upon v4 okay so we can write w total is equal to now you can put these values so, you will get minus R natural log of V2 upon V1 
and T2 minus T1. Okay. Now we comes to efficiency of the heat engine. Efficiency we know is given by minus W total. It means work done by the system divided by the heat absorbed Q2. Okay. So this will be equal to R natural log of V2 upon V1 T2 minus T1 upon R T2 natural log of V2 minus V1 or we can write it natural log of V2 upon V1. Okay. So this term to this term see here we can write it in this manner T2 minus T1. Okay. And here we can write R we can write T2 here. Okay. R natural log of V2 upon V1. Okay. So what we are getting this will be equal to T2 minus T1 upon T2. It means efficiency of a heat engine depends only upon the temperature of the sink and temperature of the source. Okay. And this is the formula for efficiency of heat engine. Now there may be two special cases. If T1 is equal to T2, if T1 is equal to T2, then no work is done in the cycle. Actually net work will be equal to zero. This means there cannot be any net conversion of heat into work in an isothermal cycle alone. So we take different types of processes. One times we take isothermal reversible process, then we take adiabatic reversible process. Okay. And second thing is this T1 must be zero or T2 must be infinity. In order to obtain an efficiency of 1, in only that condition we can obtain an efficiency of 1. Otherwise it is not possible. So we can say that efficiency is always less than 1. That means only a fraction of heat absorbed at higher temperature can be converted to work. This is the principle of the second law of thermodynamics that says no heat engine can work with the 100% efficiency. It means the value of the theta cannot be equal to 1. This is only a hypothetical engine that gives the maximum efficiency but actually in nature there is no car no type of heat engine present. This is only a hypothetical engine. Okay. So this is all about the car no cycle. Meet you in the next video with some more topics. If you want some more things, you can comment me. If you have any problem, you can comment me. And if you are liking my videos, then please share these videos with other students and subscribe the channel. Thank you.